EV. That's Australia's only 100% electric car sharing platform. And they're sponsoring today's video, which you'll see why in a moment. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Coming at you live from Noosa this week. We have a full week of holidays booked here. And we decided to rent this. So we just got back from a trip to Noosa with Paige's family and we surprised everyone by renting a Model X for the week. They all thought we were renting some budget van for the week and to be honest that was the original plan until about a week before our trip I was watching one of Tesla Tom's videos and he mentioned EV and suddenly I had this idea what if we could rent a Tesla for the week and it just happened to be that there was a Model X available right near Noosa. Massive kudos to Evie. The entire process was so seamless. The website is like the Airbnb of EV rentals. They have a heap of Teslas available pretty much in every single model, which is so cool to see. I'm kind of tempted to rent a Model S for the day because I've never driven one of those either. And if you are wanting to rent a car for five days or more, there is a discount that applies for that, which is great. And thanks to Evie, you can also use my discount code Ryan25, which will get you $25 off your rental for the day. And maybe now that I'm selling my Model 3, I might get that feeling like I want to drive a Model 3 for my next holiday. So who knows, but check out Evie. And thanks again to Evie for being the first ever official sponsor on my YouTube channel. So the Model X is owned by a guy named Wes who lives in that region and rents out his car. As soon as I ended up reserving the car, Wes got in touch with me the next day to arrange pickup details. He ended up meeting us at the airport, which made it so seamless and so easy because we didn't need to try and get transfers from Sunshine Coast to Noosa, which is about a 30 minute drive and would have been probably quite an expensive cab. I met up with him a little bit earlier than everyone else and he talked me through the car, how it all works and then we had the joy of driving around to the airport pickup and surprising everyone with the Model X. As soon as we parked, Wes opened all the Falcon doors. It looked so incredible. There was people standing around going, what is that car? And yeah, to see Paige's family like super stoked thinking that we we're going to get some crappy van and we've pulled up in a Tesla Model X was pretty awesome. The best part was all six of us, including our luggage, managed to fit in the Model X. Thankfully, there's a massive frunk in this car. There's also the extra storage in the boot. So even though we had suitcases and all sorts of luggage, we managed to all get in, which is quite a testament to the amount of space that's in a Model X. I do wanna say renting this car for the week actually changed our entire trip for the better. It meant that we did so much more, traveled to more places. We kind of felt like locals having a car with us all the time. We weren't restricted to bus timetables or catching Ubers and cabs. The six of us could comfortably fit in the Model X every time we went out. This one also had the full self-driving package, which was so cool to be able to drive a car that had all of these extra features on top of the autopilot system. And as soon as we got on the freeway, knowing me, I chucked it on straight away and the car just automatically, unprompted, decided it would change lanes. It's almost like the FSD gives you more confidence in the car because it's kind of like it's more assertive. Um, even though autopilot is incredible, having that FSD kind of just unlocks a whole new range of features that I was not used to. So for the car to just change lanes was pretty exciting. The car definitely got a lot of attention in Noosa. People were just in awe every time we opened those Falcon Wing doors. And, and yes, the, the doors are probably the most exciting, memorable part of the car. But it goes beyond that because all the doors are automatic and they have an array of sensors on them. The driver door seamlessly opened every time I approached it. It knew exactly where I was standing. The sensors on the Falcon Wing doors would open in a different way if there was a car park next to you. So I think like the takeout from driving this Model X for a week was the automation of the doors was the thing that just kept me smiling. Like they're so well designed. This 
how you close all the doors in one click. Wes also gave me the key fob for the car. I've never used a Tesla key fob before. This thing was awesome and makes me want to buy one. Maybe for our Model Y, we'll end up getting one. But to be able to like click the fob once and all the doors close and the car locks or summon the car using the key fob, I had a lot of fun. It was really cool. And just the level of sensitivity in terms of like that Bluetooth radius that the key fob has, it was like, so much more responsive than using the app and easier too. So yeah, I never felt the need for a Tesla key fob, but now I definitely do. The Model X also had the air suspension, which you could adjust, you know, I think there was five different levels. That was really cool. Just feel and see the car going up and down. Great for like off-roading and, you know, doing certain types of terrain. I also really loved having the second display behind the steering wheel. It was great for navigating around an area that we weren't used to because it gives you a zoomed in version of the maps in that second display and you've got the sort of wider version on that main display. So having the two was really cool. Obviously being able to see your speed limit was really nice to have there. And you could also adjust sort of what was on the right hand side if you wanted like energy usage or battery info, there was a bit of customization in it too. The thing that's so noticeable as soon as you get in the car is just the visibility. It's a bit of a strange feeling when you've got like sun coming through. There is a strong tinting which helps for that. But then bringing across these... Yeah, it's so different. The longer style touchscreen, I didn't think that I was going to like but I actually didn't mind it. I can see why Tesla originally opted for this orientation. I still prefer the screen in the Model 3 and the overall simplicity, minimalistic style interior that you get in the 3. But for a 2018 car, the setup you get in the X is still pretty impressive. You can notice quite a big difference in the responsiveness of that display, but again, it is an older car. I can't believe it, but we did forget to do the light show in the Model X, which would have been spectacular. I've heard so many good things about the gullwing doors opening during the show. I did, however, get a chance to use the auto park feature for the first time, which I was quite impressed about. I've heard some bad things about Tesla's auto park online, but it managed to do it pretty smoothly for me that first go. The only thing being that it's quite sensitive about what parks it picks. It has to be a parallel park. There kind of has to be a car in front and behind you. You need to drive past with your indicator on so it can kind of scan the park. Once you hit reverse, that's when you get this auto park sign that comes up and you can tap on that. Instantly, the car started accelerating, turning and doing its thing and before I knew it, I was in the park. Even more exciting is that this car also had the smart summon feature, which I've always wanted to try. It was quite picky about what environment the smart summon works in, which I guess is for safety reasons. So I decided to get up early one morning and drive to the local LD car park where no one was around and the smart summon feature worked for the first time. That summon feature has to be one of the craziest things I've ever seen. That is a very cool feature. I even put the windscreen wipers on. <laughs> I didn't get a chance to test out FSD on traffic lights. There's actually no traffic lights in Noosa at all, but I would have been interested to see how it responded when it goes from red to green or just stopping at a red light, which autopilot doesn't do. I don't really understand completely all the bells and whistles of FSD and how it all works on normal roads. So I might need one of you guys to give me a demo and maybe we can make a video on that. The car definitely was quick as well. I got a few opportunities merging onto the freeway to just feel how incredibly fast it is for a big car. Compared to the Model 3, I would say the size of the Model X felt like I was driving a bus. Like it felt massive compared to the 3. But again, crazy how fast it was. I think the 75D 0-100 to does it in under 5 seconds. Oh, and another really cool feature about renting another Tesla was that Wes actually just shared his Model X with my Tesla app. So it showed up right next to my Model 3, integrated perfectly and gave me the ability to use the app with the Model X. So as you can probably tell by now, this was a very fun car to rent. As soon as we got back home to Melbourne, we had the test drive with the Model Y. It's the perfect scenario where I've driven an X for a week. I've come back and driven my Model 3 
and now I'm gonna drive a Model Y. It'll give me a really good perspective on what sort of car we're gonna to wanna to drive in the future. And the great thing was it made us appreciate just how perfect the Y is for us. That sweet spot in the middle of like bigger than the three, but not as big as the S. It's like, you know, the porridge right in the middle. It's the perfect temperature. It felt like that with the Y. We also hit 10,000 subscribers last night on this channel. So a massive thank you to everyone for the support. Paige even made me a 10K cake to celebrate. Anyway, wow, I've been talking a lot. I hope you found this video interesting. I did a whole video on the test drive experience of the Model Y, so I'll link that below. It's definitely worth watching. I've got plenty more lined up in the weeks ahead, so stay tuned for those. And until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.